It's me again, Teacher Wilson. And today, we will learn about your personality. What is personality? The word personality itself stems from the Latin word persona, which refers to a theatrical mask worn by performers in order to either project their different or disguise their identities. At its most basic, Personality is the characteristic patterns of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that make a person unique. It is believed that personality arises from within the individual and remains fairly consistent throughout life. Let's talk about physical characteristics. Physical characteristics are defining traits or features about your body. These are the aspects that are visually apparent, knowing nothing else about the person. The first thing you see when you look at someone could be their hair, clothes, nose, or figure. Everybody, including yourself, is created as a unique individual. Some of the things that make us unique are the results of heredity. Heredity is the process by which the traits or characteristics of parents are passed on to the offsprings. These include skin color, shape of eyes, or eyes and body structure. Also remember that the physical characteristics you inherited from your parents may not be totally the same with the physical characteristics of your siblings. Do you know how unique you are as an individual? Consider your eyes and ears. No two persons in this world have the same eyeball patterns. Aside from their size, the characteristics or appearance of your ears are different from those of others, even of your parents or siblings. The same principle applies to your thumb marks, lines of the palms, and footprints. Your mental characteristics include how you think, feel, interact, and behave within your environment. A person with healthy mental characteristics displays self-awareness, is self-directive, is reasonably worry-free, and can cope with everyday tensions in school and at home. An individual qualities is able to solve problems, fulfills his or her capacity to work or study, copes with crises or problems without asking for help from his or her family or friends, and maintains a state of well-being, enjoying life, setting goals, and realistic limits, becoming independent or dependent, as the need arises without permanently losing his or her identity as a person. Now let's have the characteristics of mental health. Mental health is more than just the absence of mental illness. It includes how you feel about yourself and how you adjust to life events. However, the National Mental Health Association cites 10 characteristics of people who are mentally healthy. Number one, they feel good about themselves. Number two, they do not become overwhelmed by emotions such as fear, anger, love, jealousy, guilt, or anxiety. Number three, they have lasting and satisfying personal relationships. Number four, they feel comfortable with other people. Number five, they can laugh at themselves and with others. Number six, they have respect for themselves as for others, even if there are differences. Number seven, they are able to accept life's disappointments. Number eight, they can meet life's demands and handle their problems when they arise. Number nine, they make their own decisions. And number 10, 
They shape their environment whenever possible and adjust to it when necessary. Let's talk about emotional characteristics. Emotional characteristics are acquired or learned from the things, people, and situations that surround you. These characteristics are the results of your interaction with your environment and the things and non-living things that surround you. Every person experiences the same basic emotions in different ways. Your friends might see you smiling one day and feeling quite low and depressed the next day. These emotional characteristics make you a unique person. Being able to recognize, accept, and express your emotions in responsible ways is an important part of growing up. The social behavior of a child. As they develop and perceive their own individuality within their community, they also gain skills to communicate with other people and process their actions. Social development most often refers to how a child develops friendships and other relationships as well how a child handles conflict with peers. How do you define self-concept? The term self-concept is a general term used to refer to how someone thinks about, evaluates, or perceives themselves. To be aware of oneself is to have a concept of oneself. The individual's belief about himself or herself including the person's attributes and who and what the self is. Here are some ways you can do to improve your self-concept. Number one, be cheerful. Smile a lot. Laugh out loud if you must. Number two, be clean and neat. Take a bath. Wear clean clothes. Number three, be honest, trustful, sincere, and loyal. Number four, be responsible. Number five, be resourceful. Number six, be thoughtful, practice good manners, and always say please and thank you. And number seven, be cooperative. Each person is a combination of different characteristics. When you're physical, mental, emotional, and social characteristics are in harmony, you reflect a favorable and interesting personality. So when you look at others too, never judge them just by the way they look or behave in a certain situation because you don't know them that much. Remember the saying, don't judge the book by its cover. Prevent yourself from making unsolicited comments about others, especially if these remarks do more harm than good or bring about animosity. That's the end of our lesson for today. I hope you've learned a lot of things. See you next time. Bye!